Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. I thought we'd do a little bit of rabbit chasing here in the next couple of episodes, perhaps, sort of overlapping with what we've been talking about of late. We've been looking at the phrase, one another, and all that is entailed and all that we learn from that. And we still have uh, a lot more to look at. But today I thought we'd look at one of the one another phrases that will lead us into something else for a few episodes, and that is of giving thanks. At the time that uh, we're actually doing these podcasts, uh, originally, uh, it is Thanksgiving season of uh, 2017. And so the scripture is uh, just full of places where it tells us to give thanks, to give thanks, to give thanks. Even the world acknowledges that we are to give thanks, which is always sort of curious and interesting, uh, that they believe that we're to give thanks. They're just a little shaky upon who the receiver of the thanks is. You know, if you're giving thanks, it requires somebody to give thanks and somebody to receive of that thanks. And when you talk with people about it, particularly those who uh, say that there is no God and who claim to be atheists and all that kind of stuff, it's interesting that they still will speak of giving thanks. And sometimes it just actually gets strange. They'll talk about uh, Mother Nature or Gaia or things like that. So anyway, I thought we would go to Second Thessalonians today <clears throat> in the first uh, chapter of 2 Thessalonians at the beginning of the letter. And uh, it says this, verse 1, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this church uh, was an amazing work of God. Uh, Paul comes bebopping into town with his entourage, shares the uh, gospel message at the synagogue, and does so over three Sabbaths, and then gets run out of town. Uh, it, was, it was a very dangerous thing. Uh, and yet people believed, and the ones that they left behind continue to believe. They were undergoing uh, all sorts of persecutions. They had all sorts of afflictions. And uh, Paul wrote to them in First Thessalonians and talked about and just encouraged them with uh, what he'd heard about them, how the gospel was going forth through the entire region because of what they were doing. It's just amazing what the Lord was doing with them. So that's who he's writing to. So hear this. He says, uh, to the churches of the Thessalonians and God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see this so often in the appalling letters at the beginning and at the end, sometimes at both, sometimes at just one. But the, uh, Paul is speaking the grace of the Lord upon them. And he's speaking the peace of the Lord upon them. How different would our lives be if we did likewise? If when we communicate with somebody, whether it's a text or a letter or a phone call, or if we see them face to face, or especially if we have a, a, a meeting of some kind in a church, things like that, that we spoke forth the peace of the Lord, the peace that comes from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. At the very beginning, that we speak forth that peace and the grace of God, I think it would guide us tremendously. So he speaks forth this greeting. Then he says this, verse 3. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged, and the love of each one of you toward one another grows ever greater. So here's the one another phrase again, and it's speaking of how the love of each one of them grows toward the other one, and it is growing in greatness. So he says, we ought to give thanks to God for you. He says, not only do I want to, but we ought to, to give thanks to God for you. He says, it's only fitting because your faith is greatly enlarged. Your faith is growing and your love is growing. I tell you what, these are things which are sorely missing within the professing body of Christ today. Okay, Actually, rare is the place where faith is growing. Rare is the place where love toward each other and one another is growing. Oh, we're cordial. We're nice. We're friendly. We feign all sorts of close relationships, but we really don't have that. And he says, I give thanks to God because you do have it. And that love of the Lord is causing you to grow uh, uh, in the oneness that only comes about by him. But that's just the first part of the sentence. Listen to verse 4. 
Therefore, because of this, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. And he says, because of this, because of what? Therefore, because your love toward one another is growing, because your faith is greatly enlarged and is continued to grow. Because of this, we speak proudly of you among the churches of God. And, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you're not supposed to. Pride is bad. Pride's wrong. No, 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 no. He's proud of them. Okay, he's proud of them because of what they're allowing God to do and how they're persevering and how they're having faith in the midst of persecutions and afflictions. These persecutions and afflictions were coming from without. Uh, There would be problems that would rise up from within, no doubt. Okay, but these things were coming up from without, particularly from the religious rulers. Uh, let me just read the last verse, the next verse, verse 5, because it says something. This is a plain indication, in other words, what he just said, of God's righteous judgment so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. So these folks were suffering, and they're suffering in the Lord, and they're undergoing persecutions and affliction. But guess what? Their faith was growing. Their love toward one another was growing greater and greater. And Paul said this, man, we ought to give thanks to God for that. And he did. And we need to do likewise. And we need to live in a way as the body of Christ that uh, uh, people from without and people from within the body of Christ would give thanks to God for what they're seeing. Anyway, take this before the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and see what he does. Again, I'm Dale, and I'll see you soon.